three days of uh, isolation left and it's been pretty good actually the weekend was pretty terrible here there's a lot of boats around a lot of people doing the wrong thing actually but um, during the week it's all pretty cruisy we feel like we can take a bit of a walk on the beach not meet anyone and uh, not really affect our self-isolation anyway a few more days to go beautiful day today though. Well, the coronavirus has been pretty crook lately. Uh, just finished the, uh, two weeks in isolation, 14 days, and got through that okay, so still fit. Um, but I have got a hard stand. I've got to put the boat up on the hard and do the anti-foul, uh, prop speed the props, change the anodes, and uh, polish the hull. So uh, a book to come out for a week, and we're just heading back to uh, boat works now up the Cooma River. So I've just left from Jacob's Well and we're heading to the Cooma, probably about an hour and a half trip, pushing a bit of tide at the moment, but I've got all afternoon. So I'll get down in the river, I'll anchor up there and then uh, take the boat up to the hard tomorrow morning. They're lifting me out at seven o'clock. Um, if you haven't seen what I do hard standing, I'm not going to film it again because I've done it a couple of times. So if you search for my videos and want to see how I do it, uh, there's some good information there on hard standing and uh, even some good info on the best places to hard stand if you need to. Anyway, the uh, plan is to do that and then now that we're through isolation and we found out that we don't have coronavirus, the big trick is to make sure we don't get it and I think the best place to be is going to be on board the boat. So uh, we'll keep a pretty low pi profile on the hard stand and as soon as we're finished I'm putting the boat back in the water and if they haven't changed everything and you can't do it, uh, I'm going to start slowly heading north uh, and I'm going to cruise for the next two or three months, keep away from the general population and hopefully keep my boat as a bit of an arc from this bloody virus that's affecting everyone. Well a week on the hard, got the boat anti-fouled and polished, didn't have many other jobs to do, we put prop speed on the props and uh, ready to go again. So I've just been in the marina for a few days just cleaning all the dust off the boat. And now uh, I'm going to head up to Jacob's Well again. I'm going to put the boat in my mate's berth. A lot of you will be pleased I'm putting an electric anchor winch on the boat. So uh, I've bought a mule winch, a good Australian winch. I've been suffering with some sort of muscle disorder. I've got my biceps and my thighs um, are sore as if I've been doing a lot of work and I haven't and uh, I don't know, I've got to go to the doctor and get diagnosed on that, but something that's uh, making it really hard to, to work and uh, making it really hard to do things on the boat. But anyway, I'll just work through it and um, see how we go and get the doctor to give me a diagnosis of what it is. to be heading back out the river but there's a bit of work to be done uh, installing this electric anchor winch so um, at least I've got my mate Bruce up there that's um, going to give me a hand, he's an auto elect so he knows what he's doing and um, he'll do the wiring and I'll probably mount the thing up the front and uh, it'll definitely make it a bit easier raising the anchor, uh, it's just something else I've got to look after I guess but uh, the newer winches they're made in Australia, they're really solid, they're all stainless, they're a great winch. Cost a few bob, but um, I think it'll do the job and see me out. So um, we'll get into that. I think I'm going to park on his pontoon. Uh, if he, he's got a mate up the road where he can put his boat, but he's going to move his boat and I'll park on his pontoon. We'll do the job there, so that'd be good. But I'll wait and see when we get up there. I may have to anchor out for a little while until he organises it. Just a nice start to be uh, heading back down the river and having the right water, though, that's for sure.
Well, this is the last time I'll have to do this. I'm just upping the anchor and uh, we're going over to Bruce's to type to his pontoon and replace this old hand windlass with an electric one. It's been a great windlass, it's a newer um, Neptune and still working beautifully, but uh, I guess an electric one is gonna be a lot easier. And seeing as how I've had such a good run with this windlass, um, I'm gonna put another mule on. Well, the winch is off. Um, we had a hell of a lot of trouble getting the spurling pipe out. Uh, this is where the spurling pipe came out of. But you can see that the um, spurling pipe on the bottom of it, the chain coming up through it over 20 years, has flared the bottom of the pipe out. So to get it out, we virtually had to pull it out and rip it up through the timber. So that was a pretty hard job. And anyway, that's all done. So uh, now we're just working out the logistics of um, putting the winch back on. We're going to have to chock it up a bit to get the chain angle right and things like that. So we're just working out the logistics and we'll make up a list of uh, things we've got to go and purchase. Always something to purchase on a boat. Off and now we're just drilling holes uh, in my boat to run all the cabling through so uh, just a few holes down here we've got three cables to run some quite big um, heavy uh, battery leads and also uh, another three core cable for my reversing solenoid so a few cables to run up the front there but it's all pretty accessible I've got to cut a couple of holes in the dash for switches and so forth Our tool of choice, Bruce. Yep. The Bosch fine saw. Bosch fine saw. Excellent for doing that sort of work. And of course, we checked behind the dash before we started doing that to make sure we weren't cutting through any nasties. Nasties. <laughs> and this hole is for the uh, circuit brake switch. circuit breaker and our up and down switch mounted in the dash don't even need to do any varnishing day three of the uh, electric winch install so we've done pretty well actually the last couple of days um, got the old winch off that was a bit of a chore um, we've traced where all the wires have got to go and we've drilled it through holes few bulk through bulkheads and um, and uh, trace the wires back to the battery bank so that's all good today we're going to make up the wires and probably run them through up to where the uh, solenoid is going to be sighted and uh, get them up to where the winch will actually be so we're probably waiting on a bit of plastic um, to be cut to uh, actually mount the winch hopefully we get that today uh, if we don't it'll be after the weekend anyway it's all um going along spiffingly.
shot, I think. Got him? Yep. This is uh, day six of this project and um, we're getting pretty close. Uh, we've got most of the wiring run. Bruce is doing a little bit more finishing off up in the lockers. And um, today I go and pick up the plastic that we're going to jack the, uh, the winch on. So the last bit, which is probably the most awkward, uh, is just installing the winch up on the front and then we'll be able to test it, I guess. That's all gone pretty well. I think and that holds it all together then. Yeah. Can't come up, can't come in. Just an update on my sore muscles. Uh, I went and saw the doctor yesterday and he ran some blood tests. And he also prescribed some tablets that I think are steroids. Uh, I took two tablets and within about two hours, all the pain in my muscles and my thighs and uh, biceps had virtually gone. And I tell you what, it makes it a lot easier um, just being on the boat and working uh, without working against that pain all the time. So I've got another appointment to see him tomorrow. We'll see what the diagnosis is, see where we go from here. But uh, I tell you what, it, uh, I feel 20 years younger than what I did um, the day before yesterday. So you think it's, I can't even say it. <laughs> so polymyalgia aromatica. So that is what you have. And that is the muscle pains and aches. So if you look here, uh, there is an inflammatory aromatic disorder of older mm. people. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> that affects the muscles of the shoulders and the yeah, hip regions yeah, yeah. of the body. Yeah, right. I mean the symptoms. I think if you look at this, this is really oh, yeah, for sure. everything exactly, that you yeah. had. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And then diagnosis is basically by uh, blood tests. Yeah. You know. Okay. Your ESR and C-reactive protein. So the normal is less than six. Yeah. You're at forty-six. All oh, right, so so well, that shows that there's definitely a lot of inflammation, yeah, so, right. which would be consistent with this whole mm. diagnosis. That uh, mm. so I bet you, if we repeated those things today, we yeah. would notice that the numbers are down. Yeah, because Positive. we stopped the inflammation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it took about two hours. Yeah. I couldn't believe how quickly it worked. It was yeah. just fantastic. Well, shock horror getting to the pointy end of this job and um, we just uh, put all the studs into the windlass and offered it up. In the book, in the uh, Muir book, in the middle of the book is a template and they give you a template to cut all the holes. Now we use that template to cut all our holes in the deck. So you lay the template down on the deck there and um, drill all your holes and cut all your holes. The big problem is this template's not to scale. And it is marked on there. It's not really marked very well, but in very fine print it says something about scaling. But unless you're aware of it and you use that template, all your holes are going to be out when you drill, uh, when you drill them in through your deck. So we've drill, drilled a shitload of holes here that we've just had to fill up with epoxy. Fortunately, the main holes are going to be usable, but all of the mounting holes, we've had to fill them with epoxy to um, to uh, fix the problem. We're going to have to re-drill them. So if you're fitting one of these winches, 
be really careful. Throw that bloody template out, it's no good, or rescale it or do something. Actually, what we did, we took out four uh, Allen screws and it dropped the, um, dropped the uh, gasket off the bottom of the winch and we're going to use that as a template. We can use that, set it up and drill our holes. If we'd done that in the first place, it would have been fine, but don't use the template that comes with the winch because it's not to scale. Uh, I'm just, just putting this, I'm, I'm not knocking you, well I am a bit because I don't think they should put that template in a booklet uh, if it's not an actual scale template. Uh, so I'm knocking them a bit, but I've rung them and told them about it, but I just don't want anyone else to go through the drama we've gone through this morning. I thought, a template's a template. <laughs> not a rough guide. <laughs> okay, so we're back to square one. Um, what we've done, we've taken this gasket off the bottom of the winch. That's going to go on there. That's going to go on there, and we're going to use that to re-drill our holes. But you can see these are a little bit out, but I think there's enough of the chain to go down, and we should be all right. But uh, yeah, bit of a drama. Be really careful. Uh, don't use that template. It's uh, nowhere near good enough. Uh, day seven today so we've been on this job for about a week yesterday we were in reverse we had to um, fill up a lot of holes that we drilled uh, that were in the wrong place so all that's been filled with epoxy and now we're going to use our uh, gasket as a template to mark out where we've got to sight this winch so hopefully today it all goes forward and no steps back that's what we're looking forward to anyway. Anyway, we'll just see how we go. We've got the winch set up there, but uh, we've got to get the motor up from underneath. And there's a little bit of uh, tricking around just to get the terminals out of the way and get the motor on the right angle so that the chain misses it, misses it when it drops down the anchor locker. So what's happening with the motor the way it is, these terminals, are right against the uh, side of the the uh, anchor locker so we're going to move we're going to rotate the motor around to get them out the way Just like that, turn it down. Probably one of the most important things with both the, um, the motor and the relay is when you're tightening these terminals, put a spanner on the bottom nut and mark your stud with a line so that you can watch the stud does not turn. If that stud turns, you're in deep trouble. So keep your spanner on the bottom nut while tightening the top nut when your cable's in. Do exactly the same thing with the relay. Put a spanner on the bottom nut, mark your terminals with a scratch to make sure that they stay still, and then tighten your top nut. Very important, otherwise you'll do damage. unit on we've got the motor lined up underneath we're just bolting it down now so fingers crossed just got to get these last few bolts on wire it and um, that's the job done well, we've had a little win it took us uh, three or four hours Bruce three or four days three or four days <laughs> To get this bloody thing mounted and in the right position with the motor lined up so the motor runs up in front of it here and it's all in so now all we've got to do is finish tracing these wires up to the terminals on the motor and then we should have an anchor winch unbelievable 
up. It's been a chore, I tell you. seven days but I tell you what it is going to be a lot easier raising the anchor now. <laughs> 